Lobster bisque is one of my all time favorite things to eat, but let's be honest, it's not the cheapest soup out there. So you have to make sure you save this for a real special occasion. It's a thick, rich, creamy soup comprised of lobster stock and cream. You're also in for a treat because this recipe goes all the way back to one of my favorite chefs in culinary school, Chef Flowers. And let me tell you something, this bisque is one of the best out there. We're first gonna start off by knocking out some prep. Sound good? Let's cook. All right, Comies, we're gonna start with a large yellow onion. You could, of course, use a sweet or a white onion. Slice off the ends, slice it in half, remove that outside peel. Then we're gonna small to medium size dice it. We're not making a stock that's cooking for seven to eight hours. No, this is gonna cook for one to two hours and you can pull more flavor from these if the knife cut is smaller. Next, I have one large carrot. You could use to medium size. I'm going to peel it, or if you don't wanna peel it, just rinse it under some cold water. Then again, small to medium size, dice it. I now have one rib of celery and you guessed it, small to medium size dice. Now for a little chef's secret ingredient, fennel. I've got one fennel bulb here. We're gonna slice it in half, slice it in half again, remove that top part with the fennel frond, slice out the core, and we're just gonna use this quarter piece here that we're also going to small to medium size dice. Then you should have a nice bowl of vegetables with small to medium size knife cuts. Now I've got six garlic cloves, just slice off the end and then it's lobster time. I have two, two pound each totaling four pounds or 1,814 grams of fresh live lobster. And a huge thanks to my friends over at Cousins Main Lobster who sent me these beauties. Now they did say they would give all of you 15% off on any of your orders if you use the code BILLY15 at checkout at CousinsMainLobster.com. They also said they would leave the code up for as long as they could. So that means maybe even a couple years. So be sure to check it out. I'll put it in the description below. Now for the part that, well, no one really wants to do. We need to split these live lobsters in half. So here is how we do it. Beginning with one lobster here, I like to place them in the freezer about 20 to 30 minutes ahead of time. It sort of knocks them out and dazes them. Then locate this little T section right here on the back. You can't miss it. We're gonna take a chef knife, put the tip right on that T, and then roll the knife forward right through the head. I'm gonna take this off camera just in case anyone is a little squeamish. All right, then once we do that, turn the lobster in the other direction and right where you put the knife in, we're gonna put it back in there and slice down going all the way through the tail. You may need to make another slice or two just to make sure you're completely through there. Now we're gonna clean out the inside a little bit, starting with the stomach, which is towards the top at the head. Just pull this right out. And then this sort of off green color looking thing that's known as the tamale, which is actually a delicacy in some countries. I'm going to remove that right out of there. And don't worry if you can't get everything in a full swoop, because what we're gonna do is just give it a really quick rinse and get everything else out of there. Now what we wanna do is remove some of the meat and specifically the tail meat. If you haven't already, just pull out that top intestinal tract. It should just rip right out, no problem. Now to remove the meat right where the lobster tail connects to the top of the lobster body, I just slice down till I reach the shell. And then honestly, just gently pull it right out of the tail. It should remove with ease until you get to the bottom, which you're going to need your knife just to slice it out of there and remove it from that shell and just set it to the side. Now for the claws and knuckles, just twist it right off the lobster body. You have options here. You can save this for later and not extract the meat. I'll show you how to cook it, or you can extract the meat right now. So place the towel over top, use the back side of your knife. The towel's there so shells aren't flying everywhere. And what you'll need to do is sort of finagle the meat out of here. This is not easy and it does take some time. So you also may need your knife to get in there and get all of the meat away from the shell. This part, again, totally up to you. Repeat the process completely with the other lobster. Then of course, clean your cutting board. And I know I've said stuff like this before, like in my chicken stock video, how important it is to me to use as much of the animal as possible so that nothing goes to waste. One of my friends who's a chef, she said something really profound once to me. She said, I think people should kill their food from time to time, whether that's fabricating a live lobster or a fresh fish, whatever it is. It certainly puts things into perspective and makes you appreciate what's in front of you. And it makes you wanna use everything. When you go to the grocery store and all you see are packages of meat, you don't think, wow, that's five cows or that's 10 pigs or whatever it is. So that's why it's so important. We sort of just honor this animal by making sure we use as much of it as possible so nothing goes to waste. That's what they did back in the day and that's what I hope we can continue to do now. 
Okay, it's time to make our bisque. In a large 12 quart or 11.4 liter pot, we're gonna add in three tablespoons or 42 grams of olive oil. We're gonna turn the heat to low medium, then immediately add in the garlic cloves. We're gonna saute these just for a couple minutes until they get browned just like this. So be sure to move them around so that nothing burns. At this stage, let's go grab all of our lobster bodies tails and tops of bodies and add them right there. Turn the heat up to medium. We want to saute these for about six to eight minutes. Of course, hand on your hip while stirring. You'll notice though, while sauteing, some of the meat will get stuck to the bottom. Be sure to scrape it. We don't want anything burning to the bottom of this. And if you start getting nervous that it is, just be sure to turn the heat down to low. We're in no rush here. Continue to cook them until they're bright red. Now, there are a lot of recipes out there that call for parboiling the lobster. No, 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 no. There is so much flavor in that raw lobster body, and when we saute them, it brings out all the flavors into the stock, and that's what we want. The most delicious stock we can make. After all, this isn't cheap. Let's make sure we do it right. All right, once they're red, we're now gonna add in the vegetables. So just as soon as the lobsters are good to go, let's grab that bowl of veggies and add them all in there. We want to caramelize these up, not a crazy full caramelization that's going to take an hour, no. I believe over medium to medium high heat, we can achieve this in about 12 minutes. Once you notice that the vegetables and specifically the onions are starting to turn brown, you'll see some nice caramelization spots on the fennel and the carrots as well, we're good to go. We're now going to pince and add in a quarter cup or 56 grams of tomato paste. Use your spoon and mix this in completely until all the vegetables are coated and we're just gonna cook it for about four to five minutes. All pince means is browning up tomato paste in fat. And I do this so that it extracts more flavor from that paste and in return puts more flavor back into the stock. It's a total win-win. All right, once it turns that nice rust color, we're gonna to move to the next stage. Now this is gonna be a little chefy, a little restaurant forward. Don't worry, I'll provide some substitutes when it's all done. Here's what we're gonna do. Deglaze with one cup or 240 grams of brandy and then you wanna reduce that amount of liquid by one half. However, this first batch of liquor, you're going to notice that it's really going to absorb right into the tomato paste and the lobster, so it's hard to see that it cooks down. But after just two to three minutes, we're next gonna add in another fortified wine, actually. One cup or 240 grams of dry vermouth. You'll see this liquid a little better, and again, we're gonna cook this down until this amount of liquid has reduced by one half. You'll definitely be able to tell when you look at the bottom of the pot and notice that it's thick and cooked down. And now last but not least, one cup or 240 grams of port wine. We're also gonna cook this down until it's reduced by one half. And I get it, there's a lot going on there. Now, if you want, you can just use brandy. And you don't need the three cups total, like with the port and the vermouth. Now you just use one cup or 240 grams. Now another option instead of brandy would be sherry. Now that we've got that last bit of port wine in there, we're gonna reduce this down in half again, and then we're gonna add in a few more things. So you'll notice as soon as you pour that wine in there, there's a good amount of liquid in there. And again, just cooking it down until the amount of liquid is reduced and concentrated, it will be so flavorful. You can definitely see the liquid has been absorbed and cooked throughout. This really only takes four to five minutes. There's not that much liquid in there. So just be patient, you'll be good to go. Now for another little chef ingredient trick, we're going to add 12 cups or 2.9 kilograms of chicken stock. This will take it to the next level. You could of course use water. Then I have one quartered Roma tomato, peelings and seeds are fine, and then two fresh basil leaves. Mix all of these ingredients together, and then we're just going to simmer it on low to medium heat for 45 minutes. But first, see all that fond, all that goodness on the top of the pan, get a rubber spatula and scrape all that right into the stock. So while this is cooking down, I have to share one of my favorite stories that involves Chef Flowers. I used to go to high school with a girl named Natalie who actually sang back up to Britney Spears. Now, when I was living in Arizona, I get this call and it's Natalie. She's like, hey, we're in town. Britney Spears has a concert. And I said, yeah, I saw, you know, in the paper that you guys were here. She's like, well, do you want to come to the concert? And I'm like, eh, Britney Spears, no offense, not really my type of music. And she's like, well, you can come hang out backstage. I'm like, yeah, I'm on my way. I mean, I'm 18 year old boy, of course. Get a chance to meet Britney Spears. I'm going to do it. Here's the catch. I had school that night. We had switched to night school and culinary school and we were cooking in the restaurant called La Cole. So I drive up to school, 
I'm like, Chef Flowers, look, I have an opportunity to meet Britney Spears. And he's like, no, you don't. You have no, you're not gonna do that, no way. And I said, look, if I can get a picture, I'll prove it to you. He said, if you get a picture, I'll excuse your absence. So I get to go to the concert, I'm backstage, I'm hanging out with Natalie, in walks Britney Spears, didn't even recognize her. I'm like, who is that girl? And then Natalie's like, that's Britney. And I was like, oh my gosh, Britney Spears. I explained to Brittany the situation. She gladly took a picture with me, reached out to my buddy, the one in the picture. He still had this from tw over 20 years ago, which is crazy. So there you go. Met Brittany Spears, Chef Flowers came through. All right, we're gonna keep cooking this down. With about 15 minutes left in that simmering process, remember those claws that I didn't cook? Yeah, we're gonna add those right into here and cook it for about 12 to 15 minutes. It's going to season up the stock even more, and then you're gonna get cooked claw and knuckle meat from the lobster. Beautiful. So after that amount of time, come back, let's check it out. The stock looks great, it smells fantastic. We need to strain everything. So remove the pot right from the burner, going right over to the countertop. I've got a chinois. You're going to need a ladle or a dipping pot, which is this. It's got a little curvature to it to pour right out. So begin to strain the stock right through the chinois. The reason I like this is because it can pick up so much more than a ladle. Of course, fish out those cooked claws. Set those to the side to cool it down slightly. Then once you get to the bottom of your stock pot, I just pour the whole thing in there, no big deal. But this next part is important. You wanna push as much of that goodness through the chinois as possible. It's just going to make it that much more flavorful. So using a really strong ladle or even a potato masher, mash this through. I promise you it's worth it. Take the time to do it. Once you get all of it out there, I like to just strain it one more time. That just means you don't have to do it. I just like everything to be silky smooth and perfectly clean. All right, once it's in there, we're just transferring it right back over to the cooktop. You could use that exact same pot if you want. I'm gonna pour it in a seven quart or a 6.6 .6 liter Rondo pot. Once it's in there, we're turning the heat to high. We wanna boil this, we wanna reduce it by one third. Cook it down, get more flavor out of it, and cooking it down is just gonna concentrate those flavors more and more, making it that much better. Do not skip out on this process. All right, really quick, when it comes to thickening, there are several different ways that you can do this because we need to do it soon. This first one is known as Bermonnier. You're going to need eight tablespoons or 113 grams of very softened unsalted butter, then eight tablespoons or 62.5 grams of all-purpose flour. I mash this together using a spoon at the beginning, then I'm gonna transfer over just to using my hands because guess what? Bermonnier translates to kneaded butter. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna knead the butter until all the ingredients are incorporated. Perfect, set it to the side. The agent is known as a slurry. You've seen me do this before. You'll need six tablespoons or 60 grams of cornstarch. Then what we're gonna do is add in six tablespoons or 90 grams of cold water. Make sure it is not lukewarm or hot. It will not work. Using a spoon or a whisk, combine all of these ingredients together until they're essentially that, a nice little liquid. Perfect. Set this to the side. Now let's go over to our stock and have a look. You can see that it's beautifully cooked down. It's reduced by one third the flavor. So, so good by doing this. Then what we're gonna do is add in two cups or 480 grams of heavy whipping cream. I like to whisk it while pouring it in there to make sure it is completely combined. Once it is whisked together, that's when we add in our thickening agent, either the Bermonnier or the slurry, you be the judge. This gets activated by turning the heat up a little bit to medium to medium high, like a very lightly boil. Also, we're gonna season it. Be sure to try it first because lobster bisque is uniquely salty because the lobster's from the ocean. So season it up with sea salt and ground white pepper, mix everything together, and then finish it with a quarter cup or 60 grams of brandy. Now you can see how rich and creamy and thick this is. You can perfectly pour it, it's excellent. Now, if you're not to this stage and it's not thick, you're going to need to add more slurry or more bourmonier and get it to this consistency, which is known as nappe. When you can coat the back of a spoon, I run my finger through it. It doesn't go through that little area. We're good to go. The soup is finished and the smell, oh, the smell is amazing in here. Oh my gosh, I can't wait for you to try this. All right, really quick. Garnish is incredibly important on a lobster bisque. We've got a lot of uncooked and cooked lobster meat. Let me show you what we're gonna do with it. Okay, remember that cooked claw? Perfect. What we're gonna do is just place a towel over it, bash it with the backside of our knife. That shells aren't flying everywhere. You can see that all the meat's cooked. 
fantastic. Just pull it out of all of the claws and the knuckles and then just roughly chop it. No big deal. It doesn't have to be perfect. Set it to the side. The other one is known as butter poach lobster. Yeah, it's good. Got a nice small little cast iron skillet here. Going to add in a quarter cup or 60 grams of Chardonnay wine and then eight tablespoons or 113 grams of unsalted butter. Cooking it over low heat just until the butter is melted. At this stage, we're going to add in our lobster, and you may need to do this in batches, which is no problem at all. We want to make sure these lobster tails and meat are most of the way covered in this fat. And we also want to cook it over low heat or else some of that pellicle, some of that white protein can come out if you cook it too fast. See my smoked salmon video about that. After four to five minutes, we're just going to flip it over. You can see that it's white. It's slightly firm, but tender, not overcooked. Cook it for another four to five minutes. We're good to go. Oh, my dear Comies, my chefs in training out there. Everything is finished. Always about those techniques. I always tell you, let me show you how to plate this beauty up. I like to serve this up in a shallow bowl so I can showcase a lot of that lobster meat garnish. So pour several ladles right in there and then add either the cooked chopped knuckle meat or even the butter poached lobster. You be the judge here. Both are going to be beautiful. And then for a little bit of acid, a little bit more creaminess, I'm going to drizzle in a little bit of creme fraiche. I've got a great recipe on my website. I just like to make this in circular motions and then garnish it with some thinly sliced chives absolutely loved making this recipe. I went straight down memory lane all the way to culinary school. I think if you take the time to do this, you and your guests are going to love it. Now, if you're looking for another recipe to impress some folks with, absolutely check out my Steak Au Pois recipe video. See you on there.